Welcome back to St. Michael's College School for the lineups here as we take a look at the two different lineups that are going to be playing for all Canada team and the all Toronto team. First for the all Canada team, the five starters will be Jermaine Buckner, Bernard Cote, Shami Gill, Kyle Wilson, Mustafa Alzanati, and uh, Darren, the Kyle Wilson playing uh, for the all Canada team uh, from White Rock Christian High School in Surrey, BC, certainly setting the uh, setting the deal. As we take a look at for the all Toronto team, it's going to be number 21, Jabula Murray, number 30, Denim Brown, number 25, Stefan Marcetic, number 32, Kern Carter, and number 34, Kevin Messiah will be the starting five for Toronto. Good matchups here so far, both teams. The team from the All-Canada team it seems to be a little bit taller, but the Toronto team has great athletes, so that will neutralize that height advantage. As we see Toronto take the opening tip. Kern Carter looking to go right to the rim and a foul called right off the bat. That foul will go to number 32, Mustafa Elzanati. That'll be his first personal foul. That was an excellent job by Carter, keeping the ball alive, trying to get, get it to the basket for his team. Here's Denim Brown and this package comes in huge praise. He's got all kinds of universities looking at him and he's certainly considered one of the best five high school basketball players in this country at this time. A lot of talk about Denim Brown over the last couple of years and uh, it's great to see him at this level getting so much attention that he so deserves. There was an alley-oop attempt for Jermaine Buckner, the 6'6 forward out of Ross Shepard High School in Edmonton, Alberta. As we see Jabula Murray bringing the ball up. That pass attempt was to Kevin Messiah, who let up an air ball. And here comes Kyle Wilson, known as White Rock Chocolate after. You can see why there's a fancy pass by him inside. Kyle Wilson, no look pass inside is errant, but the Toronto team gets the possession. And we get Jabula Murray bringing up the ball for Toronto. He'll look to drive, he's gonna put the ball up. Good spin move by Murray to get into the paint. His shot won't go for him. There's Stefan Marcetic. He's going to go hard to the hoop. And a foul is called on the play. Good hustle. Good physical hustle by Marcetic there. Grabbing the rebound. Stepping to the line now to shoot two free throws. And let's take a look at the replay, Darren. There's Marcetic on the rebound. Leaned in there. Fouled by number 14, Shami Gill. No question. Gill on the foul. That'll be his first personal foul. The team's second. Marcetic at the line for Toronto. Both teams not on the board yet, just feeling each other out here in the early goings of the first half. Stefan Marcetic uh, transferred to Runnymede Collegiate this past year after playing with Oakwood Barons, which was a bit of a, a transfer surprise. However, uh, was still able to get in some exhibition and tournament basketball games under another name because of the current labor dispute with the Toronto area high schools. It's crazy out there, guys are changing their names to play basketball. What's, what's going on? As we take a look at the replay here. Last play here. Shami Gill trying to get his hands on the ball. Little scramble underneath for the ball. Resulting in a foul. So number 32, Mustafa Alzanati at the line to shoot free throws, knocks down the first of his two. A foul on Denim Brown, his first personal. Not a good sign for the Toronto team. Denim Brown, you don't want to get him in foul trouble because you need him in the game as long as you possibly can. Mustafa Alzanati at the line for uh, Canada, as you said, Darren, and he's got five offers as of last night. Last night for recruiting for all the major universities in the NCAA who were here yesterday for the evaluation, and uh, five offers came out on the table just like that. He's a hard-nosed shooter and uh, certainly a player that head coach uh, Jerry Hemmings and assistant Peter Yiannopoulos can look to. Kern Carter, they're going to the hole hard, was fouled very hard, and uh, the Toronto team had the inbound underneath. Nice shot, Denim Brown, it's all twine. Sweet-looking shot by Denim Brown. We'll see some of his versatility. He can shoot it from the outside and play the inside, so look for a lot of that mix-up game from him. 
Jermaine Buckner losing control of the ball after a pass from Kyle Wilson. 4-2 for Toronto here in the opening minutes. Good hustle by Kevin Messiah to steal the ball there and uh, regain the possession for his Toronto squad. Here's Tabula Murray. Murray can really take it. Penetrating hard kicks off to the wing. Kevin Messiah, second year All-Star here in Toronto at a York Memorial. Considered one of the best slam dunk artists to ever play in Toronto. Dennis Tana Brown, Brown with the shot attempt. Showing more versatility. You saw him handle the ball there a minute ago. Here's the bucket to Jamula Murray as he's fell going to the hoop. Good putback by Jamula. Take a look at the rebound, the replay here. Denim Brown underneath can't get his shot to fall, but Murray comes back with the putback and the foul, so he'll get an attempt at a three-point play. Good look at Jabula Murray, who transferred from Eastern Commerce to go to Bathurst Heights. Did not uh, suit up for Bathurst Heights this year at all. That's good, going from one powerhouse to another. And Aaron pass away from Kyle Wilson. That pass intended for Jermaine Buckner. And with this Canadian team, you're going to see a lot of errant passes and stuff like that because these guys have not had the opportunity to play with each other. They're just getting together for this game. Maybe they've only practiced once or twice, so you're not going to see a lot of flow within their game. Good block by Gill. Kern Carter going to go up as Kyle Wilson puts it quickly off the backboard for two. Good body control by Kyle Wilson was traveling at a high rate of speed there, gathered himself and laid it soft off the backboard. Kevin Messiah looking to drive to the rack. A foul has been called. And in this game, you're going to see a lot of individual talents displayed. A lot of guys looking to penetrate, take it to the hole, shoot their shots, and just display their talents. Take Here's a, a look. good look at the replay, Darren. Messiah trying to slice through the defenders and is fouled. Two Kevin shots Messiah at the line, line for two, as you said. Another look at it here from a different angle. Shammy Gill is certainly looking to carry the ball as well. He's just not a forward. He can uh, certainly dribble the ball up the court. Playing aggressive defense, blocking shots, and looking to take the ball up the court as well, showing some of his versatility. Find Kevin Messiah to be a very confident basketball out there. Very confident player right there. He'll get another chance at the line. A lot of players on this Toronto team are highly touted by a lot of American schools, and you can see the confidence in their game. Um, they don't back down from anything. And the shot off the rim, Kyle Wilson comes up with the rebound as the players build the rim. Look at that move. Kyle Wilson with the Jason Williams look. No! And the LU bars a class. We thought there was going to be a slam dunk, and the players all of a sudden pick it up. Look at Wilson handle that ball. Trying to go high to that pass, but Jabula Murray wasn't having any of it. And he commits the foul. Wilson commits the foul after losing the ball. Kyle Wilson with the look of Jason Williams. Watch this play, Darren. Look at Kyle Williams going behind the back, passing it off to Edwin Reynolds, and his shot is blocked. Wilson has to be careful with that basketball. He'll find these Toronto defenders are really tough and won't has, have an easy time of making passes like that. Here's Kern Carter with a three-point attempt. It's off the rim. Reynolds comes up with the rebound. Quick pass to... Oh, 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 oh. Pass. <laughs> Jimmy Gill comes up with a slam dunk. It does not count as there's a foul on the play. Look great nonetheless. Beautiful pass by Jason Wood. Take a look at the long pass here. Kyle Wilson got it over to Jermaine Buckner. Stefan Marcetic charged with the foul, his pers first personal as Buckner goes to the line for Canada. And Kyle Wilson looking to excite the crowd here tonight with his fancy Jason Williams style passing. Jermaine Buckner, a 6'6 forward out of Ross Shepherd High School, as we had mentioned earlier, from Edmonton, Alberta. Played on three provincial championship teams and has now signed with Richmond in the NCAA. He's a big kid and it looks like he's still got some growing to do. Nice soft touch on the free throw shot. All of a sudden, it's 8'6, three minutes into the game. This is Kern Carter, Denim Brown. Good defense by the Canadian team. Hand checked out of bounds. Toronto team will regain the possession. The Browns looking to inbound the ball. Here's Jabula Murray. The quick pass to Kirk Carter. He's rejected. Get out of here with that. And here comes Kyle Wilson. 
Put it high off the glass. Four guys to the boards for Canada. And this is Edward Reynolds picking it up. Reynolds, the star, 6'8 forward out of Toro, Nova Scotia. Canadian team doing an excellent job of crashing the boards, getting three or four guys up at the glass each time. And there's a rebound. Kern Carter getting up there to put it in for Toronto. Good job by Kern Carter getting up with the tip in. Here's Wilson. He'll let it go with the three point attempt. It was deflected, and Brown comes up with a quick pass to Joe Bula Wright. An attempted alley oop. Stephen Marcetta came up with the rebound, but here's Kyle Wilson for Canada. Wilson drops it off. The drop pass to Buckner, and a traveling violation on Jermaine Buckner. Both teams still feeling each other out here in the first half. Substitution for Toronto coming in for, to the game for Toronto will be J.R. Bailey and Emmanuel Tiki. Bailey from St. Michael's and Tiki from Runnymede. Stoppage of play here. Referees are a bit confused, I think, with the numbering of some of the players. Some of the numbers, Darren, uh, did not come to us until the day of the game here, and uh, also there was a couple of switches uh, just before game time, so the officials are just trying to iron that out. Quite understandable, considering it is an all-star game, and uh, they've had to try and straighten out the numbers beforehand, but uh, getting back to action, the ball above the rim. That's the way it's going to be played, and it's going to be an up-tempo pace here, so uh, you can certainly identify with that. These guys are high flyers, and they like the fast-paced game, and you can expect a lot of that here tonight. Kevin Messiah. Oh. Well, the officials are uh, making that call. Just recognize the officials. John Grilly, Moro Sardoni, and Lloyd Eidelman. You get a look at that replay, Kevin Messiah splitting the defense, going up and drawing the contact, and he'll find himself at the free throw line for two shots. That foul will go to Jermaine Butner, his first personal. The team's fifth, as Brown is at the line for Toronto. Brown certainly the, the big player for the past couple of years with Bathurst Heights. Last year, he led Bathurst Heights to the Ontario Championship at the AAA level. And this year, they were right back at the Austin Championships, eventually losing to. There's a rejection right there, getting above the rim. Sticking it up on the glass. Both teams played very physical basketball here in the game. El Zanatti feeling the floor as he tried to go to the rim. Each team trying to establish a tempo, making the other team know that you can't get anything easy. Look at that block. Denim Brown way above the rim to block Edwin Reynolds' shot and keep it in play. That's very important to keep a block shot in play, and Denim Brown did that on that sequence. There's a steal, however, a foul has been called. That foul will go on Jabula Murray, his first personal foul. The substitutions coming in for the Canadian team. 11-8 here at St. Michael's College School, 15-26 left in the first half. Dana McKeel with Darren Thomas bringing you the old Canadian Classic in a big way. Toronto leading Canada, 11-8. Good ball moved by the Canadian team. Chad Ferguson, we see J.R. Bailey going up for the rebound. And a foul called on the play. That foul will go to John Popovsky, who's now into the game for Canada. That'll be his first personal. Good look at J.R. Bailey as he goes down to the free throw line, Darren. That's a big guy, Dana. Stand 6'10". One thing about the St. Michael's College School players that they've always produced giants, and we go back to the days, Darren, of uh, Leo Ruggins and Mike Heller to George Papadakis and Sean Dodds to Bernard Jackson. <laughs> said before Kevin Messiah is known as one of the premier dunkers in this city in the high school ranks, so that's not a big surprise that he do something like that. Three-point attempt by Jabula Murray did not go. 
Quick pass to Dominic Susi, who's intercepted by Tim Brown. He'll bring it up. Here's an L. Shedding up full steam ahead. Here's Andrew Carpenter. Carpenter with a three-point attempt. It's off the rebound. Susie comes up with the rebound. Off the backboard, and Susie comes up with the rebound there. And I can't keep up to the pace. It's so quick. Ooh, nice play. John Popovsky. Ah. Good decoy move there. Didn't get the shot to drop for him, though. Here's Tiki. He'll put up the three-point shot. He's making a statement with the outside shots. You've got to connect the cover him, or else he'll knock it down. Manuel Tiki making a statement here as well. Here's Cote. Cote and J.R. Bailey. That's quite a matchup. Nice shot from outside. Dominic Susi. Susi answering back with a nice outside shot. This game is really starting to get warm. He's got interest from Niagara and William and Mary, both NCAA schools. Here's Tiki with a three-point. Oh, my goodness. He's laying it up from outside and letting the crowd know about it. 24-16 in favor of Toronto, and Toronto wants to make a statement here. Displaying a lot of talent here on the Toronto team. Great outside shooters, high flyers, good defenders. They've got it all. Cote, one of the top players in Canada. Chocolate violation called on Dominic Soucy, the pride and joy out of St. Foy, Quebec. Considered a CGIP and All Canadian Player of the Year. As we see the Canadian team call timeout, and Darren, let me tell you, things really kicked after Kevin Messiah's dunk on the alley oop. Well, the Toronto team is making a statement in several ways. Playing above the rim and that outside shooting, as you see Teki here lining up at the three point line for his third three point shot and knocking it down. Nothing but twine. Manuel Teki making it happen with a tray. He's got a nice looking stroke there. Lines it up well. He's got good form. And he's hit three in a row. Let's go into the huddle. Get it off. Too big to say. Two baseline screens. You see what I'm saying? Let's go right around that. Give it to you. Get back. Okay, kick it back to you. Let's go. And a quick look at both Canada and Toronto as things are heating up here with 12 20 left, 20 left in the first half. Toronto with an eight point lead. Canada showing some full court pressure here, trying to slow down that fast break of the Toronto team. It'll be the same five that were out there just before the timeout was called. 
This is Carpenter working against Popovsky. John Andrew Carpenter who had Teki steps out of bounds and it's Canada ball. Carpenter who uh, played his basketball at Bathurst Heights. He's got interest from Youngstown State, but he's destined, according to the uh, tournament uh, game event organizers, destined for a prep school. Here's Popovsky. Popovsky with the shot off the front of the rim. Attempting a three-pointer, they're not successful with that, but he can knock down that three-pointer, get a great outside shot. Good look at Evan Pellerin, and here's your prototype Toronto area high school all-star here with a, an 80% average in high school, Jarvis Collegiate. Strong basketball player, consensus all Toronto high school all-star. Here's John Clark with the ball, another star center out of the St. Mike's college system. And Andrew Carpenter with the turnaround and drops it for two. Nice move by Andrew Carpenter to spin into the paint and uh, get that shot nice and soft off the, off the back of the rim. John Popovsky with that pass to Chad Peterson. It did not work. Toronto now with a 10-point lead. Here's Carpenter with Techie. Carpenter's gonna run the offense. Good matchup with Popovsky and Carpenter. Techie running the baseline, trying to get open down there. Great move, takes it to the hole strong, and scores a deuce. One thing about Techie, he's fearless as well. That's right. A lot of these players are fearless at this stage. They can take it to the hole strong and are not afraid to, you know, take it at you. Dale, one thing about Jerry Hemming's uh, squad, that they're throwing the ball away and that there's too many turnovers here in the first half. Well, like we said, this is a team from comprised of players from all over Canada, so they have not had the opportunity to play with each other. The Toronto team, on the other hand, has had time to prepare and practice a little bit with each other, so their offensive sets are going to look a little bit more fluid than the Canadian team. Kyle Wilson back into the game for Canada. He's in there with Shammy Gill. Jermaine Buckner. Uh, it's Zach Hogan now into the game, too. Zach Hogan out of White Rock Christian High School, same high school as Kyle Wilson. Andrew Carpenter. Three-point attempt, a little bit of a battle for the ball, and it appears it's going to go Toronto's way. Good look at Zach Hogan, a 6'5 sweet man out of Surrey, B.C. He's got Eastern Washington and Duquesne University looking at him right now. Carpenter. J.R. Bailey. Toronto's got a big lineup, 2 6 10 forwards in there for Toronto. Here's Techie again taking it down the lane. He's hammered. And foul called on the play, Darren, as we see the replay here. You see Techie putting it on the floor hard, penetrating in, meets the big towers down below. Not afraid to take that context. Someone like Allen Iverson, who sacrifices his body night in and night out. I think Iverson uses all those tattoos as markings of where he's been hit every time he drives to the bucket. <laughs> Here's Techie. Techie, who not a lot of people know about. He hasn't really... Uh, well, he's one of those hidden gems that we talked about before. He's a good outside shooter, penetrates hard, and he's a good finisher on the low. So, look to see some more of that from him tonight. Shady kill off the backboard, and there's a bit of a spin mark before it goes in. St. Michael's Twin Towers and J.R. Bailey and John Clark out there. It's a good move by Bailey to spin around and get him face up to the back and get a shot up, but he wouldn't drop for him. Carpenter with the travel. Andrew Carpenter with the fake move to Emmanuel Teki. Second thought on that move, but traveling violation called in Canada will pick up the ball. There's Kyle Wilson putting on a little flare on the dribble. Toronto really taking control of the game here in the first half. Kyle Wilson with the shot off the rim. That was a three-point attempt. And the big difference so far between this game right now is three-point shooting. Toronto has knocked out three three-point shots in a row by Emmanuel Techie, but the All-Canada team hasn't been connecting from outside, so that's making a big difference so far. Bit of a change in the lineup for the Toronto team. Now back in, Kevin Messiah, Stephen Marcetic, Denim Brown, and Jabula Murray, as Murray will run the offense playing the point position. Techie still out there for Toronto. Good patience being shown by the Toronto team, moving it around. Nice pass into Brown. Nice move. 
And Jabula Murray being able to spot Dinda Brown and Brown with the reverse tip. Nice pass to Zach Hogan. Couldn't handle the pass and hit to Brown on the drive. Good take by Brown. Unfortunately, the ball won't drop for him. Jermaine Butler with the rebound as Kyle Wilson comes back up with the ball. And a foul is called on the play. Kyle Wilson looking to penetrate hard on the baseline there. Draws the contact. Non-shooting foul, so the Canadian team will have the ball underneath. Take a look at Kyle. Tries to break the defenders on the baseline. Not much contact, slight contact, but the ref called it anyway. Now foul on number 21, Jabula Murray. Although the referee indicated number 22, Emmanuel Pecky with Murray to be charged with the foul. And he looks to oh, good behind the nice pass to Stephen Marcinic. Murray looking in the rear view mirrors on that one, being able to spot Marcinic behind his has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Turnovers are killing him right now, and the Toronto team is capitalizing on those turnovers. Great defense by Messiah. Like we said, the turnovers are killing them, and it's evident here so far. Toronto team playing a tough brand of defense, getting in the passing lane, getting right up in the offensive man's face, and creating turnovers such as we just saw. Jermaine Buckner with his second personal foul. And Darren, a lot of these Toronto area players have played together in the past with these uh, AU type squads led by Wayne Dawkins and Roe Russell down into the States, creating a lot of awareness and recognition for those players. Well, these players are, are getting together, playing together, and they're getting some recognition as a team. And it's a good idea, it's a good concept that uh, Roe Russell and the organizers have, have put together. And it's evident that they play together. You can see them running offensive sets, and you can see them looking for each other back door, running the baseline. The Canada team's not able to do that because they haven't had the time to practice together. Kevin Messiah on your screen. Certain, certainly setting the plateau for the Toronto Area High School All-Stars. Definitely. Kurt Carter has checked into the game now for Toronto. Darren, we've got a starting five of Carter, Messiah, Murray, Brown, and Marcetic out there. And Marcetic just was assessed with a foul. Shammy Gill stands at 6'8". Take a look at the replay here. He can put the ball on the floor and handle it. He's got good ball handling skills. Was fouled on the play and will shoot two from the free throw line. One of the top big men here in Canada, Shammy Gill. He's got over 50 T1 schools looking at him right now. Kyle Wilson from way out knocks it down. Nothing but twine. Kyle Wilson from downtown. And the crowd is beginning to light up here as well, spotting that this is a phenomenal amount of talent on the floor. Jabula Murray penetrates the defense and puts it up softly for another boost for him. Here's Wilson looking to shake and bake. Kyle Wilson to Jimmy Gill. Gill will let go with the shot. Versatility can shoot the three-point shot as well and knocks one down. Dennis Brown with the three-point attempt. Butler comes up with the rebound. 38-24 in favor of Toronto with eight minutes left in the first half. There's Wilson. Can it show? Ooh, nice pass over to Buckner. Beautiful no look pass by Kyle Wilson as we see Kurt Carter driving to the bucket. Great move by Carter, coast to coast for the easy dudes. Kurt Carter of the Father Henry Carr High School here in Toronto. 6'3", junior player. A lot of teams looking at him, particularly West Virginia, Purdue, Stanford, Notre Dame at the inside track. Tough defense there by the Toronto team, and uh, a foul was assessed, and Shami Gill will step to the line yet again. Toronto a bit too aggressive on defense, looking to steal the ball on every possession. They have to ease off of that pressure a little bit because they're getting assessed with a lot of fouls. Kurt Carter with his first personal foul as we see Shami Gill going to the line for Canada. Gill originally from BC, but had been playing this past year at Philip Pocock High School in Mississauga. The Canadian team is already in the bonus situation, so the Toronto team has to watch their fouls because uh, the Canadian team will step to the line on every foul from here on in. There's Gill at the line. Shifting the score to 40-26 in favor of Toronto. It has been clearly a Toronto 
display of talent here in the first half. Damon Brown shot off to Mark Gill with the rebound. You can sense the tide is slowly changing now as Canada readjusts. They're starting to knock down some three-point shots and they're getting some inside looks. They've got the bonus situation on the line, so they have a great opportunity to get back in this game before the half is finished. Bernard Cote letting go of the ball. They appear to be stripped, but a foul has been called on the play. Kern Carter charged with his second personal foul. Let's take a look at it here. Bernard Cote slapped by Carter, so he'll step to the line. No question about that foul. He could fry an egg on his arm that, that sounded so hot. Take another look from another angle. <laughs> oh, it's hack but Darren, you certainly lead in metaphors. <laughs> Here's Kyle Wilson on the rebound. He'll bring it himself. The quickness of Kyle Wilson clearly showing on that drive. As we saw, Mustafa El Zanetti, the senior player out of Vanier. And we're going to see Toronto call a timeout with 6.49 left in the first half. 40-26 in favor of Toronto. And Darren, if you're the coach from Canada, what are you telling the troops? Wait, way to start picking it up. Let's take a look at the replay here. El Zanetti going in. Ball bobbled off the back of the iron. But if I was the Canadian coach, I would tell my troops, you're doing the right thing now. You're starting to knock down some three-point shots. Let's start to play the inside-outside game. Establish the big men in the post, kick it back out, and you'll start to knock down the shots because they do have great shooters. Here's Jerry Hennings. I'll guarantee you will get something good. Right? But we got a screen, we got a move. And what we do, we get them occupied a little bit, we can beat them off the dribble. I think the players are playing around with it too much outside. Establish the inside game first, and then you can kick it back outside. You get those shots all night. Canada out there with Mustafa, El Zanati, Kyle Wilson, Shami Gill, Bernard Cote, and Jermaine Buckner. With 6.49 left here in the first half, Stefan Marcetic will inbound the ball for Toronto. Kern Carter, Jabula Murray, Denham Brown, and Kevin Messiah will be the five for Toronto. It's Kyle Wilson playing some tough defense against Kern Carter. Quick pass to Marcetic, not able to recover as Kyle Wilson will come up with it. Alzanati caught with a traveling oh, violation. Good attempt by Alzanati, good body control. You can see the Canadian team now is stepping up their defensive pressure, causing the Toronto team to turn over the basketball. Here's Jabula Murray. Murray, quick pass outside to Denver Brown. He's caught, charged with a traveling violation as we see some sloppiness in the way that they're handling the ball right the now. The tides are turning now. At first it was the, um, the Canadian team uh, creating a lot, doing a lot of turn, making a lot of turnovers, and the Toronto team was capitalizing on them. Now it's the Toronto team turning the ball over, and the Canadian team is uh, starting to capitalize. Denham Brown, who has Villanova, Kansas, and Auburn looking at him. A lot of, fact, a lot of big Division One schools there. Roy Williams, the head coach of Kansas, was here last night talking to Denham Brown and uh, talking about the possibilities of playing with the University of Kansas Jayhawks. When you've got the head coach of that caliber coming up to see you, it says something about the caliber of that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at you seriously. Good hands by Kyle Wilson. Almost goes into the wall there, but stops himself. Another fearless player out on the basketball court. That's right, that's right. All of these guys like to go to the hole hard and uh, put their body on the line. Kevin Messiah with this shot. Here's Kyle Wilson. Oh, great pass to White rock chocolate, look at inside. Nice play, that was Kurt Carter, puts it up with the left hand on the drive. 42-26 in favor of Toronto. Good finish by Carter. Wilson, inside pass to Shandy Gill, he likes to go to the hole, he drops it. Shandy Gill going to the hole strong. And I think that's important for the Canadian team to establish their inside game. Let's take a look at it here. Gill putting the ball on the floor, turning inside with the easy lane and was fouled, so he'll attempt a three-point play. So look at it from behind. Kurt Carter charged with his third personal foul. Alan showing some pressure on. 
see some substitutions shortly. Tiki coming back into the game as we see Kevin Messiah dropping two for Toronto, 44-29. Nice touch by Messiah down there on the face line. There's Gill showing his versatility. He's starting to light it up for the Canadian team. Gill with a rainbow. Yabula Murray. And a foul called on the play. It looks like an offensive foul on Jabula Murray. Has to be careful though. Once you get up into the air and leave your feet like that, you're virtually helpless on a play like that. All the defender has to do is gather his position and take the charge. He looks a little bewildered on that particular call, Darren. <laughs> And take the charge. He looks a little bewildered on that particular call, Darren. <laughs> As we see Chapula Murray, there on your screen, and we'll see Mustafa El Zanetti at the line for Canada. Nice stroke by Elson, and he's got a pure free throw stroke there. He'll shoot two because of the bonus. And this is where the Canadian team really needs to capitalize on drawing the fouls. They've got the Toronto team in some foul trouble here in the first half, so they need to knock down the free throws at every attempt. Elson, really showing something here yesterday during the evaluation camp. The coaches in. Scouts were looking at him and quickly five offers on the table. Happens that quickly. Here's El Zanetti now on the drive. And a foul will be called on Jabula Murray. Smart move by El Zanetti to throw reverse and draw the contact. And Murray was assessed with the foul. Let's take a look at it. Here's Al Zanetti coming down the left side. Pumps it up underneath. And Murray comes across his body. Another angle for you. Allison Addy at the Looked free like throw he line. Took a knee to the back there, Darren. Some type of contact right there, yeah, put him at the line. Jabula Murray's game is above the rim and certainly above everybody's shoulders. The Canadian team has cut the lead to 10. Could make it nine with this free throw. And they make it nine, so they're back into this contest here. Certainly a good concept that they are able to have Toronto against the rest of the country. Toronto being the big, biggest city in the country. Or to put it another way, the New York of Canada. Denham Brown showing how he can handle the ball. Almost has it stolen. Playing, playing around with it a bit too much. Messiah going to help out Denham Brown on that particular play as we see the ball worked over to Jabula Murray. And an illegal quick set by Manuel Tanky. That'll be his second personal foul. Canadian team starting to get things together now. And here we see them back at the free throw line again. Mustafa El Zanetti will go to the line for Canada. A lot of bumping and grinding out there right now. It hasn't been that flu in the game. And El Zanetti must have the most pure free throw form that I've ever seen. He really sets himself properly, gets the knees involved, follows through, leaves the hand out there. He's got great form. 44-36 in favor of Toronto with Zanetti at the line for Canada. 6-5 swing guard out of Vanier College in Montreal. He's got great form. I don't see how he would ever miss a free throw with that form. Evan Pellerin out there with Emmanuel Techie, John Clark, J.R. Bailey. Techie doing a good job of bringing up the ball against the pressure from Al Zanetti. And Andrew Carpenter right there, as we see Toronto connect again. Nice. Running up the score to 46-37. Great move by Evan Pellerin inside, using his size to gain the advantage on that possession. Toronto with a very big lineup in there right now. Two 6 centers and a 6-6 six, six, six swing man. They're just shot off the rim by El Zanetti. And Toronto will take over the ball as we see Chad Caterson back into the game for the Canadian team. He's out of Champlain, St. Lambert, and Cote St. Luke, Quebec. Carpenter working against the defensive pressure. Joe Clark throwing it away as we see El Zanetti coming up with the ball. Quick pass. Nice layup, Joe 
be able to get it through the trees who are protecting the bucket. Good sequence by the Canadian team finding each other on the break, and Pellerin comes back with another two of his own. Evan Pellerin getting a lucky bounce as the backboard shook. 48-39 in favor of Toronto, 3-10 left in the first half. Shot from outside by Bernard Cote, did not go. Big man, nice and three. Showing some versatility. Cote right there for the two, and the ball will hang right there in the middle of the net. There you see the versatility of Cote. He just shot a three-point shot at the other sequence. This, this sequence here, he finds him underneath for the easy do. So he's got inside capabilities as well as outside. Considered the top junior big man in the country. He's got Louisville, Michigan State, and Notre Dame on his tail. Keller now working against the defense. J.R. Bailey with a three-point attempt off the backboard. And I don't know if that's the shot that Bailey wants to take. Canada has had to battle back from upwards of a 16-point deficit. They've whittled it down to seven with 2.29 left here in the first half. Well, they're starting to feel comfortable with each other, and they've got that option of always going to the free throw line, and they're capitalizing on it. So it's no doubt why they're down only seven right now with 2.29 left to go in the half. Caterson at the line for Canada. 6'5", senior player, tough defender. It looks like he may sign with Belmont University out of Tennessee. The opportunities that these players have in Canada nowadays is just phenomenal. Back when I was playing high school ball, the opportunities weren't as plentiful as they are now, and it's, it's just unbelievable the opportunities that they have, and uh, it, it's great to see. Well, I think with the AU squad traveling in the States and the amount of knowledge and information, and uh, certainly the computer definitely helps in being able to get out information about Canadian players and uh, just how talented they are. It's a nice move to Andrew Carpenter driving to the bucket for Toronto. Andrew Carpenter showing some skills there, penetrating into the paint and getting a nice soft layup off the play. I think the American coaches and scouts uh, also display a lot more confidence in the Canadian players. I think it has to, a lot to do with the international scene as well. Here we get a look at the replay here. Dominic Susi taking it to the baseline, beats his defender, meets the contact underneath, and John Clark will be assessed with that foul. That'll be Clark's first personal foul as we see Dominic Susi at the line for Canada. As we were saying before, then I think the international feel has a lot to do with it too. The NBA has started to the influx of international players, and uh, the closest international country to the USA is Canada, so it makes sense that they come here and look for players as well. Daniel Kelke showing us a scene of karaoke out there with the ball. Looks like you're on the ball out there, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> Inside pass to John Clark, and his shot did not go as we see a high flank. Kapowski with a nice pass to Susie. Couldn't finish it, though. Great sequence, though. Here goes Emmanuel Teke. Teke with a nice pass. Shot off the backboard by Andrew Carpenter. Canada wanting to walk it up now, take a little time on this sequence. Down by seven. Dominic Susi with 126 left in the first half. And Sapkowski looking to penetrate, pulls it back out. Three point attempt. And get three shots on that shot. David Hinn with a three point attempt, and I think he was. Uh, Showing a little bit of Hollywood there as Evan Pellerin apparently knocked him over. Here we see the replay. That was an ill-advised foul. Not, it was more after the shot than anything, but he still got the foul. Never want to foul a three-point shooter outside because they're going to get three shots. You're Just better off taking the gamble to see if they missed the shot rather than foul a three-point shooter. David Hitt really selling that foul to the officials. And he'll go to the line for three. And he was awarded with three free throws out of it. Played on numerous provincial basketball teams and has signed with Vermont, a Division I team. Northeastern United States Conference Basketball. And now the Canadian team putting on some full court pressure. J.R. Bailey looking to go up with the ball. He means a lot of traffic. And a foul is called on the play. 18. Toronto team still not in the bonus yet. Let's get a look at the replay here. J.R. Bailey underneath, grabs the loose ball, tries to spin and put it in, and is fouled on the play. And here he is at the free throw line. Canadian foul on uh, Edwin 
Reynolds, his second personal foul, as we see J.R. Bailey at the line. Bailey connects. 52-45 in favor of Toronto, 110 left in the first half. We see bits and spurts of uh, ball above the rim and some fast action. Here comes Kevin Messiah. And he loses control of the ball. It does go out of bounds. And then Kevin Messiah trying to say that the coach Jerry Hemming got a ha Jerry Hemming's got a hand on the ball there. Ref didn't see it. <laughs> I think Jerry it, wants to suit Jerry's up and get rules. out. <laughs> I think Jerry wants to suit up and get out there. Jerry rule, Jerry's rules and Jerry's kids. <laughs> Here we go. Jerry Hemming's the pride and joy of Brandon Manitoba and the, the Bobcat basketball program. I always love reminiscing with Jerry about those gone by when we used to play against his team when I was at Guelph, and uh, he's got a great memory for things like that. Here's J.R. Bailey who's looking to pass. Nice pass over to Techie, and he goes hard to the rack, and another boost for Techie. If Jeff Zander and Greg Paolini, the coaches of from St. Michael's, can only see J.R. Bailey leading and filling the lanes, they'd have a coronary. <laughs> As we'll see the ball go out of bounds, Joe Popovsky in your screen will take control. Canada regains the possession. Some pressure being shown by the Toronto team. This is Chad Peterson with the ball. Canada looking for the last shot. And they'll work it down, 54-45 in favor of Toronto. Seven seconds left in the game, or in part in the half. And Caterson loses it as Techie looks to the clock. He'll put it up. And it goes. Oh, my goodness. It did go in, but it was out of bounds as it hit the top of the... the and Techie continues the hot shooting, even though it doesn't count. The That's just, suspension above the backboard, Darren, and to hit that before it went in, it does not count. He's going to make all kinds of shots tonight, I'm convinced. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break in 54-45 in favor of Toronto. You're watching the Yellow Canada Classic here on Rogers Television. Back to St. Michael's College School, 54-45 here at the half as we get ready for action here in the second half. And Darren, we've said before, we've emphasized this before, and we're going to say it again, that when teams start the second half, those are the most crucial moments that will dictate the outcome of the game. It's the turning point of the game. You know, at halftime, coaches go in, they make their adjustments, and they expect the adjustments to be looked at at the starting of the second half. It's either the point where the team that's down starts to make a surge and get back in the game or the team that's up puts the nails in the coffin as we see the starting five for canada out there will be the staff allison natty jermaine buckner shammy gill kyle wilson and bernard cote they're going over there with a big lineup well they want to neutralize that speed of, uh, of the toronto team and the only way to do that is with some height and that's the strategy right now. Toronto, they'll start with the lineup of Denim Brown, Kern Carter, Tabula Murray, Kevin Messiah, and Stefan Mercedic. So it's the starting lineup that was in there in the first half. Same starting five that started for Toronto. Rowan Barrett currently coaching the team for the high school All-Stars here in Toronto. And uh, we should put out uh, some words about uh, some of the many uh, coaches and players and former high school All-Stars here in attendance tonight. Tony Sims here tonight. That's right. And uh, Rowan Barrett taking part as a head coach. Rowan being part of the Canadian Olympic team that played over in Sydney last year. Well, this is the give back. This is how these guys give back to the sport. And it's great to see. Quick pass to Stephen Marcetic, and he'll put it up for an easy deuce. Nice move by Marcetic. Good catch and good body control. Softly laid it off the glass. So Here Darren, if you're Jerry Hemmings, what are you telling Canada? Let's start the inside-outside game. We got some big bodies in there. Let's start pounding it inside and let these big guys go to work. And if it's not there, then you can kick back out for that outside shot. Nice move by El Zanetti as he puts it over to Wilson. He'll put up the tray. No good. 
good. Larev comes up with the rebound. Jabula Murray with the pass. Quick pass to Seppa Marcetic from Kurt Carter. And it goes out of bounds. Carter's pass off the mark. Marcetic could not catch that pass. I think the, uh, the Canadian team needs to start pounding the ball inside. They've got three big forwards out there, and they really should try to utilize these guys against the smaller Toronto lineup. Kyle Wilson on Jabula Murray. Nice fake. Wilson with a quick fake, and had Jabula Murray hanging in the air. Great job. Sold him that fake like it was a cheap sale. <laughs> and he bought it. Jabula Murray and good strip to Wilson. And Wilson stripped him, as you said, Darren. And I think Jabula Murray was expecting a foul on that play as he stopped dead in his tracks after the ball was slapped out of his hand. Murray with a three-point attempt. It's good. Dialing up that long distance number from way out behind the line. Nothing but twine. 59-49. Opening minute of the second half. Alzanati. He looks to drive. He's fouled on the play. Good penetration by Alzanati creates the contact on that penetration and will step to the line, take a look at the replay. Crossover dribble between the legs, splits the defenders, gets slapped on the hand, and he'll step to the charity stripe. Get a look at it here from behind. Kern Carter with four fouls, and he'll come out of the game, and Evan Pellerin will replace him. Kote shot off the mark. And a turnover there by number 32, Mustafa Alzanati on the traveling was called on that play. Here's Jabula Murray. Murray and White Rock Chocolate all over him and strips it for a second time. Kyle Wilson playing some solid defense. Good steal by Kyle Wilson, also known as the White Rock Chocolate from BC. Kevin Messiah, Jabula Murray, and Dan Brown on the alley -oop. Brown will take a shot, it goes off the rim, goes out of bounds, and Toronto will take control of the ball. Thought Kevin Messiah was going to stuff that one home like he's done several times in the first half. Evan Pellerin looking to get it in bounds. Here's Brown, he'll take the shot off the rim, and Pellerin comes up with the rebound. And he'll chase it again, Evan Pellerin suddenly looking after his own rebound. There's an air ball. That was a bit far out. He should have stepped in. I don't know why these guys are deciding to shoot NBA threes. Not necessary. Oh, we're going to go to reject it as he went up for the gym. But Canada comes back with an easy deuce out the backboard. Jabula Murray got a piece of that dunk attempt and was enough to set it off course. 59-54. 59-51, pardon me, in favor of Toronto. Ooh. And... Dana Brown and Stephen Marcetic just not seeing it on the same page on that particular pass. Marcetic being on the receiving end of several errant passes. This will be a 30 second call, a timeout call by Toronto. Let's listen in and see what they have to say. Tell him? No, because I'm Hold looking on. for the back the screen. Play with him here. Don't worry about that. He said it. Don't worry about it happening. Just do what I'm saying. Don't worry about things sometimes. Do what I'm saying. He makes that pick. You just send the ball. I don't care about nothing else. It's there. It's going to get you guys off. It's going to get you guys forward on what you need to do. Run a play. Run it the way it's run. He's setting the screen for us. No, who's there? D from the base. Who's in the bottom? Two, three, defense. I want everybody to the the Certainly the coaching staff for the Toronto squad, no mixed messages whatsoever. It's pretty clear what they want to do out there. Well, it boils down to execution, and you can hear him emphasizing the fact that once that screen is set, you give them the ball, so they want to execute a couple of plays, and, and they'll be successful. Now, one thing about setting those screens, they've got to come tight off those screens as well if they're going to accept those passes. Good move by El a nice crossover. Had the ball stripped. The Canadian team committing turnovers like they did in the first half, and that's what got them into that deep hole. Messiah with the ball. Puts it outside to Denham Brown. Pellerin posting strong inside. Stephen Marcetic will oh. Rejected by Jermaine Buckner. A foul called on the play. Buckner. Let's take a look at that replay here. It's Marcetic putting it to the floor, getting to the basket. Buckner there to say, not happening tonight. I'm not sure there was a foul there, Darren. Not much body contact, but from a referee's point of view, 
You never can tell. We're looking at three referees, Amoro Sartoni, John Grilly, and Lloyd Eidelman, three officials with a tremendous amount of experience. Talking to Moro Sardoni about celebrating over 30 years of officiating here in the Toronto area. Covered a lot of basketball. He's, he's met a lot of coaches. <laughs> and argued with a lot of coaches. Nelson Addy with a quick pass to Buckner who puts it down low to Shady Gill. He'll square up. Gill will go for the turnaround shot. That's a tough shot by Gill, but nice job by Buckner to get the put back. Buckner able to read that and time it out properly for the put back. 60-53 in favor of Toronto. 16-18 left in the game. Murray. Here's Denner Brown. Brown will drive to the bucket. It goes. Gets that shooter's bounce. Nice take by Denham Brown and drew the contact. And he'll try to complete the natural three-point play. Take a look at it here. Nice pick set by Pellerin. Brown using it to go inside, meets the contact, and gets the crier to go in for him. The foul on Bernard Cote. Brown oh, nice. thought it was Jermaine Butter, but it is Cote charged with the foul. And quick layup by Elson Addy. Good body control by Elson Addy to gather himself on that play and just lay it up right off the pass. Bula Murray pulling it back out, taking it back in. And Darren, you see Toronto running with a double stack high as we see Dana Brown with the shot. There's a good put back by Stephen Mycetic. Here's Brown again. He'll take the shot off the rim. He gets his own rebound. He'll put it up high off the backboard. Did not go. Toronto squad is doing an awesome job on the offensive glass, but they can't finish. Jimmy Gill looking to Kyle Wilson. He'll put it behind the back, and he passed it away to Stephen Marcellic. Here's Buckner. Buckner with Nelson Addy. He'll pull it out. Good job by Buckner to alert his player of the player coming behind him, and Nelson Addy was able to make the pass. Nice backdoor look. And here's Bernard Cote, who looks to put it out. He does. A little bit of a pass there. I thought Shamie Gill was going to be able to put it down. Good offensive tip by Gill, but he won't go in. And... Jabula Murray assessed with a foul. Take a look at the replay here. Good position by Al Zanetti. Jabula Murray had that forearm out and made the contact. Offensive charge. As you had mentioned, Darren, fourth personal foul line, Jabula Murray. Fouls are mounting here for the Toronto team. 62-55, 14-39 left in the game. Here's a shot from Edwin Reynolds, the pride and joy of Toronto, Nova Scotia. And here's Denham Brown. And he'll tow it up from outside, off the mark once again. Shooting percentage has not been that strong suit for Denham Brown in this game. Here's Popovsky. Good block by Brown, keeps it in play. Good. Here it is. Jabula Murray with a jam. He has Stephen Marcelli with it, but he wanted to certainly show that he could get up there too. Jabula Murray going at the rim fiercely with a two-handed slam dunk there. Six Good job. Guard out of Bowser's tights, although he didn't play this past year. Still looks to be in fine form. Reynolds with the turnaround. It's a sky hook. He's able to get it. Good sequence there by the Canadian team getting the inside-outside game going. Still a seven-point difference between Toronto and Canada. Darren, I think we'll see this will go to the wire. I think so. And there's Jabula Murray going to take it down, and down and into the middle of the paint and just locking up a nice soft shot. Scoring virtually at will right now is Jabula Murray. Ball stolen away by Evan Pellerin. Goes out of bounds, it will go Canada's way, and we'll see wholesale changes for Toronto. Bailey, Clark, Techie, and Carpenter will come in, so there's two complete lineups that come in and off for Toronto. They don't lose much with that substitution. They got two big guys going in there, and with Techie's outside shooting, that definitely helps. Here you see a replay of the Denim Brown block as he keeps it in play. Shot from outside by John Popovsky. Jabula Murray with the long baseball pass. 
Nice play by Emmanuel Tecky, and there's T.R. Bailey off the glass, picking up some garbage. Good sequence by the Toronto team. First option off the fast break didn't went, didn't go for them, and Tecky was able to get the put back. J.R. Bailey, a 6'10 center out of St. Michael's. He's got Drexler, Stony Brook, and UNC Wilmington looking at him. Here's Bailey. Almost had his pass picked off by Dominic Susi. Clark gets the ball. Good ball movement by Toronto, but Clark in the paint for too long, and it says with the three-second violation. For coaches Greg Paolini and Jeff Zauner here at St. Michael's College this past year, certainly a pleasure in working with the two big men and John Clark and J.R. Bailey. Well, as a coach, it's always a treat when you have an ample supply of big men like that. Jabula Murray high up there, did not make anything happen defensively, but he sure got up. Six shot, John Popovsky. Dominic Stacey took that to the hole very nicely, but couldn't finish. Very interesting lineup out there right now for Canada, Darren. They've gone smaller. They've gone to a smaller lineup here. J.R. Bailey with the turnaround stolen away by Reynolds. Quick pass. They've been looking to get a little bit of a fast break game going here with a smaller lineup. Kapowski gets the put back. Nice body control for an easy deuce for him. Nice Southern Ontario combination of David Hinn from Sarnia and John Kapowski of Guelph. Good look inside. Nice touch by Carpenter. Andrew Carpenter certainly showing that he's got the scoring touch. 70-61, favor of Toronto. 11.30 left in the game. Here's Poposki. Nice pass inside to Reynolds. Reynolds shot blocked. Tipped out of bounds by David Hay. Take a look at Andrew Carpenter. He takes the ball out of bounds. This game uh, lagging a little bit, Darren, as both teams are looking to push it up the court. Started out as a, as a barn burner. The action that was going on in the first 10 minutes was unbelievable. It stepped down quite a bit as teams are getting into their sets, trying to move the ball around, and the coaches are trying to use a little strategy out there on the offensive end. And we'll see a foul on the play. John Popovsky charged with his second personal foul for the Canadian team. This will be Emmanuel Tecky in bounding the ball to J.R. Bailey. Uh-oh, Aaron pass there by Carpenter. Popovsky picks up a throw and pass. That's a basket, that counts, definitely. Good call, that's a that ball practically, and he slapped it off the backboard. As we see the Canadian team looking to push the ball up the court. Down by seven. And Toronto will bring it up on this offensive sequence. Jabul Murray. John Clark. J.R. Bailey. Bailey kicks back out. Techie with the shot. It's for three. He's got an unbelievable stroke from outside. He's hit four three-pointers. They've got to get out on him to stop that shot. He'll to really damage this uh, Canadian team with that outside shot. Manuel Teki with the look of Morris Peterson. The right headband. Good rebound by Clark. Gets it up court. There's the alley -oop. That alley -oop to Andrew Carpenter almost materialized. Here's John Popowski with a nice pass. And we see Chad Peterson trying to avoid the ball being rebounded off him by J.R. Bailey. Bailey used the oldest trick in the book there, throwing it off the defenders to get it to go out of bounds, but it was successful for him, and Toronto regains the possession. The fast-breaking style of the smaller Canadian team is working, but now we see some substitutions, and the three main big men for Can the Canadian team step back into the game. 72-63, 10-16 left in the game. And we see a new lineup out there for Canada with Kyle Wilson, Bernard Cote, Jermaine Butner, Shami Gill, and number 23, Zach Hogan from White Rock Christian High School in Surrey, BC. Good Dennis Brown, good ball movement by the Toronto team. Nice give and go. There's Kurt Carter up for the hoop, and it did not go. Shami Gill comes with the rebound. 
Nice no look pass to Bernard Cote. He'll take it up, reverse off the backboard. Good job by Cote. We should see some good inside play from both teams. The Toronto team has their two big 6'10 guys out there, and the Canadian team has about three guys who stand 6'8 to 6'9, so a lot of big bodies out there. Towel called on the play. 12 white. You see Denham Brown working against Buckner. Crossover through the leg. Buckner for reaching. That's his third personal foul. Good fake by J.R. Bailey. Loses control of the basketball. Bernard Cote credited with the steal as he stripped Bailey and the ball thrown away by Jermaine Buckner. Bad decision by Buckner. Had two options there to pass the ball. They threw an errant pass and uh, the Toronto team will inbounds on the baseline. You gotta like the game of Jermaine Buckner. He certainly plays above the rim and plays that up-tempo game. Star player from Ross Shepard High School in Edmonton, Alberta, and he signed with Richmond. Wilson from way out, looking good for him. Shammy Gill with the rebound, takes it back outside and fouls up the three-point shot of his own, almost knocks it down, Buckner with the rebound. Don't get the tip in though, and here comes the Toronto team. That was a pass to Kurt Carter, and that was John Clark who put up the shot. Toronto comes up with the rebound. 74, 65, 857 left in the game. Good swing by the Canadian team. Consistent nine point difference in the game, Derek. Yeah, seven to nine point uh, lead for the Toronto team is consistent so far here, and uh, Canadian team has to get some stops if they're gonna cut into this lead. Here's a replay. J.R. Bailey assessed with the foul against Bernard Cote as he goes strong to the hole. Could have been John Clark from behind as well who assessed that foul. There was two big defenders on him there. I would not want to be sandwiched by these two guys. No, I wouldn't want to. Six-ten centers like that, especially for the same school. I wouldn't want to be the sandwich meet in between there. Bernard Cote giving us a statement. Nice looking free throws there by Cote. Cutting the lead to eight. In the brim. Looking inside. Good penetration there by Curry Carter. No call on the play though. And J.R. Bailey comes up with it. With left-handed rebound, he gets the drop for two. J.R. Bailey showing some signs of inside dominance here. Late in the second half. He's got Brown all over him. Gill looking to shake and bake a little bit. We're seeing a little more intensity out here now on defense with the Toronto area team. Nice pass to Kyle Wilson. He'll bring it back outside. Now Wilson's got some shake and bake of his own. Beats the defender, but throws an errant pass. And Toronto will get the possession. Kyle Wilson certainly showing the moves. However, a lot of those moves and passes have been errant. With a player like that, you have to you have to do moves with players that are familiar with you. And these guys just getting together from all over Canada. They're not familiar with that type of play, so it's 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 expected that he'll create turnovers. And here you see the replay. Shammy Gill on the floor is able to throw it through the legs of J.R. Bailey. Kyle Wilson able to pick it up and take it back outside. There's a little shake and bake by Wilson gets around the defender, but throws an errant pass. Now, if you see, uh, if you're Rowan Barrett, as we see Jerry Hemmings here talking in, in the huddle, let's listen in. We listen in on Jerry Hemmings and Peter Yiannopoulos, the coaches for the Canadian team. And if you were the coach of the Canadian team, Darren, what are you telling the troops with 10 minutes or eight minutes left and you're down 10? Let's say let's use the big guys out there. We need to crash the offensive and defensive boards and let's pound it inside first, see if we can get something there, and then look it outside for the three-point shot. You've got those three big bodies in there and they should be controlling the boards all the time. Here's the replay, Denham Brown gets into the paint and is fouled on the play. Brown will go to the line shooting two. And Mustafa Alzanetti will be charged with his third personal foul. Brown knocks down the first of two free throws, giving his team an 11-point lead. Can't connect on the second. 
Messiah taking it into the paint against the two bigger defenders in Bernard Cote and Shami Gill. And we'll step to the line to try to complete the natural three-point play. As we see Messiah going to the line, we also have to comment about J.R. Bailey being right in there for the scraps. One thing about Bailey, he doesn't miss out. He certainly is in there on all the rebounds. Like a vacuum there. Gets good position, has a big body, and goes after the basketball. And as we speak, he just commits a foul. <laughs> That's always happened. That's Murphy's Law. Here's a look at the replay. Buckner penetrating inside. Too much contact by J.R. Bailey. Here's That'll a look from yet another angle. J.R.'s first personal foul as we see a good replay with Jermaine Buckner going to the, the rack. Buckner knocks down the first of two. Not too much excitement here in the second half uh, like we saw in the first half. Uh, I think they set the crowd up for something they were prepared for. That first 10 minutes of the first half was uh, hard was beating fast. I don't think I could have stood the whole game being at that pace. So it seems like it's a letdown, but both teams are playing more strategic basketball now instead of the run and gun high flying game. Get a good look at Kevin Messiah. And the battle will be inbounded by Kyle Wilson to Chevy Gill. Gill double key as he kicks it out to Bernard Cote, who elects to shoot off the rim. Chevy Gill comes up with the rebound. He's poked away by Stephen Marsetic, and the foul is called. Good, good rebound by Gill. A good shot attempt. Gill being very aggressive offensively. Take a look at the replay here. Slaps it off the backboard, gets his own rebound. Trying to go up against two defenders and gets hacked in the process. So Gill will go to the line for Canada, down by 15 with 6.55 left here in the game. Well, here's where they have to make a run now. They can't just be settling for scoring baskets. You have to make a defensive stance and stop the Toronto team sequence after sequence to try to cut into the lead. Darren, one thing about this uh, Canada clash and uh, the All-Star games that we've uh, seen here on Rogers Television that it's certainly making a statement about basketball here in Toronto and basketball here across the country. It's becoming more known, it's becoming more popular, it's polarized as it is, but uh, we're certainly seeing the stars coming out. Definitely so. In the past, you would have to bring a team from the States, bring an American team to, to draw people's interest, but now there's enough interest within Canada to have these Canadian players play against each other. This is an all-Canadian event and it's, uh, it's great to see. As we see Mustafa al Zanetti take a mugging from J.R. Bailey. Here's the replay, Darren. Mustafa al Zanetti catches the long pass, and Reed just out of control there. Bailey, sorry, J.R. Bailey, confusing him with J.R. Reed of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey assessed with the foul. Similar body type. <laughs> This is El Zanati, who beat at the line more so than any other player in this game. You gotta take a look at this guy's free throw form. He's got great form. Gets all aspects of his body involved. Bends the knees, squares up, follows through. Nice touch. Couldn't have done it any better, Darren. Good look at Mustafa El Zanati from Bendy College in Montreal. Jabula Murray with the ball for Toronto. Dennis Brown looking to run that inside-outside game. Here's Brown going to the rock. Gets his own rebound. He's stopped by Jimmy Buckner. Good job by Buckner to get a hand on that shot, but 
And Tanner Brown comes up with the tip in. Toronto team crashing the offensive glass and getting a good tip in on that play. 14 point difference between Toronto and Canada with six minutes left in the game. Jermaine Butler with a three point attempt. Allison Addy comes down with the rebound. They'll get another attempt at it. Good look inside. They're working around. Popovsky with a shot from outside. Normally he'd hit that three point shot. He's a deadly outside shooter. Hasn't been able to connect on his three point shot here. They're trying to shoot those threes with defense in their face. You got to start from the inside and kick it back outside to get the open look. That's how you want to shoot a three-pointer as an open shot, not with a man in your face. We're going to see a timeout here as we see the replay, Darren uh, Wachemi Gill. We're going to go into uh, a timeout. Uh, actually, it's not going to be an official timeout, but what we'll is Jerry Hennings? Let's attack the basket, okay? Or then drawing kick off of them. We've got to get the foul out. We're down 14. All right? And then again, down on the boards. Guys, we got to be quick off that feet. Come on, find some energy down on the defense. A uh, quick glimpse at Jerry Hemmings, the head coach of the Canadian team. And uh, he's right. They've got to get to the foul line. They've that's only the, got 547 left in the game. That's right. They, they were at the foul line in the first half, and that's what helped them get back into this game. And if anybody knows Jerry Hemmings, you, they, you know that familiar southern drawl that Jerry has is, is a trademark of his. Well, he's been coaching for an awful long time, and some of those years were spent at Tulane University in the state before coming up to take on the Brandon Bobcat program. He's done a wonderful job up there. For sure. Jabula Murray. As he steals the ball, he almost got the bucket. Toronto team having a hard time finishing, getting the good penetrations and good looks at shots, but unable to finish. As we see the a foul on the play, John Popovsky hitting the deck. Blocking foul. Called on Marcetic. Stefan Marcetic did not have his position set. That's his fourth personal foul. So Toronto in trouble with three players, all with four personal fouls. And Jabula Murray, Stefan Marcetic, and Kern Carter. Here's Chad Caterson. He'll let go with a rainbow from outside. And another foul on the play. Darren, if there's anything that marks this game, it'll be the amount of fouls and turnovers. Both teams are playing very physical. And a result of that is, is a lot of turnovers and then a lot of trips to the free throw line. Exactly what Jerry Hemmings called for in the last time out. Edwin Reynolds, 6'8 forward steps to the line, knocks down his first of two. Considered the top player out of the Nova Scotia area this past year in the high school circuit. He's from Cobequid Educational Center in Truro, Nova Scotia. It is indicated that uh, St. FX, St. Francis Xavier University under the tutelage of Steve Kachowski. It's a great basketball program. There's a from As you said, they're a good basketball program, but Edwin Reynolds hasn't committed to any one particular university as yet. He's looking to gain a U.S. scholarship. And there you see John Poposki take it coast to coast and take it to the glass heart. Splits the defenders, gets up over Jabula Murray, switches hands. Here you take a look from a yet another angle. Good crossover by Messiah. Switches hands. And Murray, Jabula Murray, unable to stop that. Well, we'll have to check the foul situation with Jabula Murray. Was he charged with the personal foul? And if he was, that is four. We are getting confirmation it is four personal fouls for Jabula Murray. And he takes it right back at Popovsky and scores a basket of his own, making a statement. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's making a statement tonight, Dad. That's what it's all about. You state your claim. 89-75 in favor of Toronto. 431 left in the game. And another foul on the play. Edwin Reynolds kissed that one off the glass and was able to score it. Contact on the play. And he'll step to the free throw line, get a look at it here. Denim Brown, the defender. Not much contact on it. I don't know where the foul was. 
Well, I think we'll have to come down on Lloyd Eidelman for that one. That had his was a hand on his hip. Foul. Denim Brown had his hand on his hip, and I suppose that's where the contact was made. And with Reynolds, the 6'8 forward out of Toronto, Nova Scotia. 89-77, 12 point difference, 427 left in the game. Here's Denim Brown. Over the mark. To Will Murray. It's oh, good. That's good. Goes inside and scores that win again. To Will Murray scores when he wants to. Take a look at it here. And he scores some tough baskets too with like two and three defenders on him. Guys swatting at him from behind. His body leaning this way and that way. I think every bucket he has scored has been contested, Darren. After look, when you look at that, when you look at Jabula Murray, you have to look at the degree of difficulty that his shots have. 92 78 in favor of Toronto. A little over four minutes left in the game. David McGill and Darren Thomas bringing it to you big time here on Rogers Television, the host of this year's All Canadian Classic. As we see a round of applause and a couple of new players coming into the game. And Kevin Messiah, Manuel Tiki, to go out there with Evan Pellerin, Denim Brown, and Jabula Murray. Those will be the those players will be the starting uh, the pardon me, the five for Toronto at this time. 92-78. Canadian team making some wholesale wholesale changes out there. Here's Murray. Ooh, drive. Nice move, nice spin, and he scores. Jabula Murray. He's taking control here, scored on the last three possessions. Tough, difficult baskets, and he's making a statement for himself here. Kyle Wilson. Outside, this is John Popovsky. And they do have time for him to be heating up, because if he does, look out. They need that for Popovsky now. There's three and a half left to go in the game, and they're down by 13 points. So they need that penetration, and Popovsky has to start, start spotting up on the three-point line. That was a uh, definite three with an exclamation point behind it. Here's Popovsky, pass to Kyle Wilson. He's flying right down Yelm Street. Ball is tripped away by Evan Pellerin. Here's Jabula Murray, and Murray will take it over here in the second half. Jabula with a little show and tell there. Fooling the defenders and laying it up for another deuce. He scored eight in a row. by Mustafa Al-Zanani. 96-83 for Toronto as things begin to pick up with a little over three minutes left in the game. Well, the teams are just trading baskets right now. The Canadian team has to make a defensive stance in order to cut into this lead. They have to stop the Toronto team from scoring at will. Canadian team foul on Mustafa al Zanetti is fourth personal foul. Darren, as we see the replay. There's Peller in there, fouled by al Zanetti. Hacked by al Zanetti. Steps to the free throw line for two. Don't want to give Evan that chance to uh, complete the play and then go to the line. Definitely not. If you're going to foul somebody, make sure they don't score the basket. That's the golden rule. Evan Pellerin. One of many uh, long line of all-star players that have come out of Jarvis Collegiate. Players like David Joseph, Sam Hill, Arthur Kirkwood. They all come to mind. Are discussing uh, high school all-star players out of Jarvis Collegiate. Arthur Kirkwood, me and him go back a long way. We used to play hockey together when we were younger. We had a nickname for him. We used to call him Silky. So that's Arthur Silky Kirkwood. As we see the ball go to the bucket, and that was Mustafa El Zanetti connecting again for Canada. Still a 13-point difference there with 257 left in the game as we see a replay. Shot, long shot from outside goes in. Here you see El Zanetti crossing over. Lofts it up. Rolls in for him. Like you said, the Chiefs are trading baskets right now. And that's not good for the Canadian team because uh, with the least of the Toronto team there, they're going to stay up.
They want to run plays. They want to run set plays in the offensive zone. Well, these players have, from the Toronto team have been together for a while, so they've been practicing and they've been working on things. So as a coach, you want to see them go out there and execute what you've been practicing. Execution here is the, the key with 2.55 left in the game. Emmanuel Teke set up for an offensive foul by John Popovsky. Very smart play by Popovsky great, to maintain his great position. Great job by Popovsky. There was a clear fast break there if Teke saw the ball down the court, but he wasn't able to gather himself in time and was assessed with the offensive charge. Popovsky will take the ball, work it over to Mustafa El Zanetti. He'll take the shot off the rim. The rebound by Popovsky, looking to light up a three of his own, and he does. Popovsky with three. And they definitely need more of that if they're going to shorten this lead here with two and a half left to go in the contest. 98-88, still a 10-point difference. And Kyle Wilson will inbound the ball. Taking some instructions off the sideline from Jerry Hemmings. Get a look at that shot from John Popovsky from behind the three-point line, and it ends up nothing but twine. Will it be a free throw, pardon me, as Emmanuel Teke will go to the line. Bonus one and one. Techie will go to the line for Toronto. So the Toronto lineup out there as it is right now with Pellerin, Messiah, Brown, Techie, and Carpenter. For Canada, it'll be Cote, Wilson, Elzanati, Hogan, and Popovsky. So the, the shooters are certainly out there, Cam, looking for uh, the foul and looking for the shot. Basket disallowed. Toronto player in the lane too early. Canadian team will get the possession on the baseline. There you get a look at Techie taking some instruction from. I think that comes to, Barrett. to discipline Darren as uh, the Toronto team cannot afford to have any discipline breakdowns here with 2.28 left in the game. They're up 11 points. It's a comfortable lead, but these Canadian, this Canadian team has some hot three-point shooters, and if they get some open looks here, they could shorten that lead in a quick time. Daniel Brown looking to inbound the ball. There's a full court press put on by the Canadian team. Got to move that basketball. He gets it over the timeline. Oh. How do you break the presses with a, a pass? And there's a nice pass to Kern Carter who drops it and the foul is called. Strong basket by Kern Carter there, meeting the bigger defenders. Here you see him going up against Bernard Cote who stands at least six or seven inches taller than him and gets the crier to go in. Look at it from a different angle. Taking it strong to the rack. Bernard Cote with his second personal foul as we see Kern Car Carter drain it. 102-88 in favor of Toronto. Popovsky will let go with a, a shot. Bernard Cote tried to catch that rebound and stick it back in. Unsuccessful, though. Nice shot by Zach Hogan. Haven't seen much of him during this game, but he scores a basket there for his Canadian team. Nice rebounder, nice play by Denim Brown to bring it back. 104-90, certainly a track beat here. A lot of pressure now in the dying minutes of the game. Kyle Wilson throws the ball out. Wilson trying to connect on a behind the back pass there, nobody there to catch it. The theatrics seem to go against Kyle Wilson at this time. He may have the moves, but it certainly hasn't paid off with buckets. That's right. Uh, like we said before, you have to, those moves will only work with guys that are familiar with the way you play. And if guys don't know how you play, you're going to make a lot of turnovers. Here's Kurt Carter, who had the ball stripped away. Kyle Wilson looks for a three-point attempt. Big rebound, and Evan Pellerin comes up with the rebound. Quick pass to Kurt Carter. That's you tell me he did not do that. Oh, he did. Clear your eyes out. That's his third monster dunk of the game. And uh, Kevin Messiah has definitely made a statement here today. Kevin Messiah setting the tone for the rest of the game as we see a crowd of people. Here you get a look at the replay. Lobbed up again for Messiah. Catches it with one hand and slams it home. Unbelievable. Kevin Messiah. 
Messiah setting St. Michael's Common School on fire with three beautiful ducks in this game. And we still got 109 left in the game. I love the way he's got the theatrics for the crowd. He wants to run up into the crowd and start hunting everybody after those ducks. If he doesn't make it as a basketball player, he'll certainly make it as an entertainer. For sure. Popovsky's long shot won't go. Messiah with the rebound and gets fouled on the play. You get a good look at Messiah again. We see another replay. foul called on the Canadian team, Darren, and there's the replay right there. On Mustafa Alzanati. Mustafa Alzanati, who is now out of the game. Five personal fouls. Dominic Susi will come in for him. Wow. Let's go into the Toronto timeout and see what the coaches have got to say. Let's go to a replay first, then, Darren. And we've got the dunk again. And for all the viewers, this is a huge treat to be able to see these replays. And if you missed the, the if you missed the first two dunks that Kevin Messiah did, check this one out. Ball is lobbed up. Oh my goodness, that is a nasty dunk. At this point of this, at this point of the game, who do you have for your consensus MVP? Vince Carter better make note that there's somebody right on his heels that can take over with the dunking ability. Quick words from the coaching staff. I couldn't decipher everything that was being said. However, they're having fun. Definitely so. They got a 15-point lead with a minute left to go. Don't have to strategize here. Just play the timeout, play it smart, and uh, they can walk away with the win here. This is Kevin Messiah at the line for Toronto. Messiah. He's made for All-Star games, isn't he, Darren? Definitely so. He's an exciting high flyer and excites the crowd, and uh, he's having fun out there. Very theatrical. I love the way he goes up in the crowd and acknowledges his, uh, his buddies out there after a big slam like that. Do have to mention that he is mentioned in the book that is coming out. Hang time will be released May 10th at Jarvis Collegiate. For all basketball fans who would like to be there, Dan Kevin Messiah will be playing in the basketball game as well. Uh-oh, oh, yeah. Number four. I think he was disappointed with that. Not stylish enough for him. Now, uh, if we look at the Toronto bench, they're waving towels. And here's a shot from three point land by Kyle Wilson. But Kevin Messiah has been the one to set the tone for the Toronto team. We're well, picking up right where he left off in the first half. And uh, he's got a good relationship with that rim, let me tell you. Dominic Susi in our screen. Six port guard out of St. Foy. College in Quebec City at the line for Canada, trying to make it respectable. Knocks down the first of two free throws. 32 seconds left to go, 14 point lead for the Metro Toronto team. As we see it go to 108.95 in favor of Toronto, and the Toronto team is standing up. Kurt Carter with the ball. He's looking to drive to the hoop. And Andrew Carpenter almost had a two-hander. This is Dominic Susi with a very easy layup. Dying seconds of the game now. We're down to 12 seconds. This is Andrew Carpenter. Ooh. Tom Carter trying to get up on the rim there for a slam dunk of his own is fouled on the play. As we see John Popovsky with his fourth personal foul, or fifth personal foul, pardon me. He's out of the game now. Popovsky not as effective as he probably would have liked to be in this game. He's got a great outside shot, and I'm sure he would have liked to have utilized that a bit more. Here we, go, guys. we see Curran Carter go to the line. And Carter goes to the line for Toronto, and he misses on the first of two. So, Darren, uh, who is your choice for MVP of the game? I, I don't think there's a choice. Uh, do you have to ask me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to ask? <laughs> Kevin Messiah, hands down.